Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this first Friday webinar, Achieving Operational Excellence and Driving Agility Through Data Management Automation. Wow, today we're taking on a beast of an issue that's been both a challenge and an opportunity for businesses worldwide, data management. And we're lucky to have Allison McCulley, ISO Certified Master Data Quality Manager and our Director of Master Data at SDI, who's been on the front lines tackling this head on. <laughs> In today's rapidly shifting business landscape, right? We can't underestimate the power of data, but it comes with challenges of handling the data. So Allison is going to show us how SDI is mastering this through the transformative power of data automation, a journey that goes from data creation and cleansing to analysis all the way through to visibility. So if you've grappled with data, you've ever wondered how to fuel growth and stay ahead of the competitive race, you're in the right place. As we go along, feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A down at the bottom. You'll notice that all participants, uh, you, you don't have, uh, you have to worry about muting your cameras or microphones. Just drop them in the chat in the Q&A box. I'll make sure Allison addresses them either during the discussion or at the end during the Q&A session. Just a reminder, we are recording this webinar and the link and the PDF to the presentation will be sent via an email to all who registered. All right, that's enough for me. Let's take it, uh, take it to Allison. Thank you so much, Deb. So welcome everyone and thank you for joining me this afternoon. I will do my best to keep it entertaining and keep your attention while we breeze through some information on data management and automating data management to create operational efficiencies. So the three key elements that we want to address today are the importance of data and data automation. Data automation is what is going to empower your business to create informed business decisions because you're removing the human element from managing that data on a day-to-day -day basis, which then guarantees a data quality and a standard that is going to propel your business forward in business decision-making. The second thing we're gonna talk about is the citizen developer program that was established at SDI by our business intelligence division this was a really exciting program and it's something that we continue to take advantage of today. It kicked off within our business in 2021 and we are continuing to grow that program as we speak. And then third and lastly, we are going to talk about the journey of data creation. So we're going to talk about everything from the time you create an item to standardizing that item so that it can fit a certain criteria to allow for informed business decision making. All right, let's dive in. So talking about improving data quality, when you are able to standardize data and have list-driven fields where you essentially safeguard people and protect them from themselves and from typos and making mistakes and errors, you're only going to positively impact the people that are the receivers of that data downstream, whether it is an internal stakeholder or a client or customer who you are delivering that data to. So this is really important and data quality is what allows for a business to then summarize, analyze, and put into action the information that they have compiled. What we are then able to do is through quality data, you are able to create operational efficiencies. You are able to empower your internal employees to be able to put their best foot forward in delivering and impacting in the best way, your clients, your partners, if you have suppliers or manufacturers that you're working with, this allows for you to have a common language amongst the business and all of your existing partners and clients. Then what we like to do is we want to improve that data quality by reducing as many errors as we possibly can. And the way that we reduce errors is we eliminate the human touch on the data. And what this does is this ensures that repeat processes are never overlooked or steps are never missed and that your data is consistently 
import it into your systems and deliver to your internal stakeholders and clients the same way every single time, which is really impactful and huge. So we'll dive into this a little bit more in the next few slides. And then what that does is that frees up resources internally. So what this is doing is this is not taking away jobs or work from you, but it's allowing and empowering your teams to use their brain power, their knowledge, their skill sets for things that are going to impact the future of the business positively and allow for growth and sustainability in years to come. You want those forward thinking minds to not be spending their time repeating the same manual efforts over and over again. You want them to think outside of the box and be forward thinking to not only impact the business here and now, but also for future years to come. So let's talk about the Citizen Developer Program. This is something I am so excited about. Um, we initially identified within the business and within our own team, super users, who we knew were the team members who knew the repeat processes and the day-to-day -day operations within each division within our company, inside and out. And these super users would be the people that would be the best resources to understand a process from start to finish and understand the impact to the business, the clients, our partners, upstream and downstream. So the people that are receiving the data at its highest levels, whether you're reporting into a senior leadership team and trying to analyze information for them, or you're working with client catalogs and suppliers and trying to source and procure information. We want to make sure that those are the people that are working on this citizen developer program. So those super users were identified. They worked with us to document the day-to-day -day processes and take us through their steps. We then empowered those employees by having them trained and exposing them to education and developing them so that they might go in and record automations and utilize bots and the power of bot recordings to then automate those manual repeat processes that they were so intimately aware of and also having to do on a regular basis. Through this, we then were diving into a culture of continuous improvement and it was empowering our internal employees to continually improve what they're doing on a day-to-day -to, -day to then continue bringing up that brain power and bandwidth so that they could apply their time that they've now freed up to better inform the business and work towards future goals and development plans. So I'm going to pause there because that was a lot. Um, I just unloaded all sorts of information on you. And I want to stop and pause to check in with Deb to see if there are any questions that have popped up so far or if we're good to proceed. No, I mean, you make some great points there about automating those processes that don't require as much, uh, that just have straightforward rules. Uh, how and like how how did how did you determine like which processes to start with? Like what should be automated uh, is the question. Sure, that's a great question. So when we looked at this, we wanted to look at it from two different angles. We wanted to look at the processes that we knew we were repeating the same steps over and over again, whether they took a significant amount of time or a minimal amount of time. We also looked at how many employees this would impact um, in a positive way. So we wanted to look at what those repeat processes were that could be recorded potentially and automated or semi-automated. And then the positive impact it might have on one team member or multiple team members. So for example, what we looked at is when you're in master data, you're often updating items, you're importing items into your ERP system, your B2B system, your B2C system, um, if you're running an e-commerce platform, all the different systems that you're managing and maintaining data in, when you are repeating those same processes, you want to record those because even if you shave a few seconds or minutes off of one process and you're repeating that process multiple times a day, once you start to quantify those number of hours that are able to be gained back, it is 
incredible the impact that it's able to have. So my suggestion would be to look at the processes that you repeat over and over again. And if it's something that you follow the same rules and criteria, no matter what, that is something that you are absolutely going to be able to automate and would have such a positive impact on you and your team. Okay. So um, what we did through the Citizen Developer app is we were able to track all of the ideas for automations that were submitted by the teams. And then also the teams and the super users and citizen developers who were empowered to record those automations. Um, and we had such a positive impact on the business very quickly and not only on the business, but also on our internal team. So what we were able to do is we were able to impact data accuracy by 100% for manual item creation and item updates. Because what we did is we took the human element out of it and removing the potential for human error and missed steps in a process. And through that one-time recording, we were then able to not only have our super user repeat the same process over and over again, but to also share that development with our existing team members so that we could ensure that we had a fully aligned team that was producing consistent results, which is going to positively impact the business and the clients. It's going to reduce the need for touches on items and repeating the same efforts. Also, what we were able to do is we were able to reduce the time that it would take to create an item when we're manually creating that item within our ERP system or our catalog management system. So we were able to reduce that by 30% and it honestly could be even farther improved today um, because we are reducing the manual effort that it takes to get that process completed, to review what you've done to make sure you didn't miss a step and then to apply that data update. And one of the other things that was really impactful, and like I mentioned before, is that not only did the super user and citizen developer get to utilize this automation and bot, but our other team members did as well. So as we were onboarding new team members, we were able to get them activated and onboard it in a much more timely manner and got them into the day-to-day -day operations and data management within the team due to the ability to access those recorded automations, which was just really incredible. And this dashboard is something that's really impactful and in informing, like I was mentioning before, our senior leadership so that they knew the improvements and enhancements that we were making um, and could really monitor those in real time, which was really impactful and amazing. So let's talk a little bit about the power of good data. So the journey um, of data management starts with cleaning and standardizing data. And this can be as simple as something that I mentioned earlier. So if you have specific data points within your item master or your material master or the catalog of parts that you are trying to maintain, um, say it's even a contact list for suppliers, what you want to do is where you can save people from themselves and from committing errors and missing steps in a process, you want to do that. So you may have different data points within your system. Say it's something as basic as currency. Say your company is global and they are working with partners who operate in multiple currencies. You can then create a currency list driven field that limits people who are selecting those data points and what they would like to be reflected in your system to only certain options. So you're eliminating the possibility for typos and you know missteps and things of that nature. Um, I don't know about you, but between social media, emails and text messages, I have more typos than I'd like to admit. And that is coming from someone who lives and breathes data, data quality, data cleansing. Um, in the speed of this world in the day to day and are wanting to communicate so real time, um, you know, it's just a part of the human element and the day to day that you experience. So eliminating that is really amazing. Um, and good data just is 
so crucial for the ability, and I've been harping on this so much, but the ability to make informed business decisions. So I want to dive into that a little bit more and show you guys some samples of data so that you can understand how standardizing and cleansing data can not only improve your material master and what you're delivering to a client, but also to allow for your internal counterparts to make the best business decisions possible. So here is a sample set of client data that we would normally receive. Um, this is an example of what we would expect to get. So we would get a client part number, manufacturer name, manufacturer part number, a description, and a unit of measure. These are some of the basic data points that we require in order to get started in data cleansing and data standardization and enrichment for a client. So what we would do is we would take this information and we would intend to conform it and standardize it to a certain level that would allow our client to make the best business decisions. Additionally, what we would also do is we would wanna lay, layer in additional data points so that we essentially enrich what the client is receiving and give them even more to work with, whether that comes in the form of categorization so that they can bucket and analyze their data, nouns and modifiers so that they can quickly search and filter for items that they know that they're looking for within their catalog of parts. And we also wanna provide back a data rich description. Search engine optimization and search engine marketing are huge. So having certain keywords and having the ability to search and easily find a part is paramount. And then we also provide what is specific to our industry and some others as well, which is a UNS PSC code. And this is a way to globally identify a part and um, assign it a commodity code or a commodity name and categorization. So let's take you through what that might look like. So we go from the client data to then return a file that may look like this. And it has those data points that I have mentioned. So we have the original client part number here. We also have the noun and modifier, which are those first initial descriptors of a part so that you can easily identify what that item is. We also have a category available here so that the business can then analyze their data, whether it's sales, purchase history, the way that, um, how many items they have within each category and also the ability to filter. Um, I don't know about you, but when I'm on different websites and shopping on the internet, I exhaust all those filter options to narrow down exactly what I'm looking for more often than I'd like to admit. And then also the UNS PSC code, which is ex essentially a more defined category. And then you have your original manufacturer, manufacturer part number, with a more enriched and data rich description, which is going to allow for search capabilities to function so much better and to provide a more robust description and better identify a part. So I'm gonna pause there because it's fun to take everyone through a transition and show you what we receive versus what we deliver and just see if there are any questions on that. Um, I know we shared some good visuals there, so I wanted to just check in. Previous slide, you had the um, kind of this is the data that we received from the client, and here is is kind of the first uh, step in transformation, standardizing it. Is it typical for the client not to have a, a manufacturer part number? I mean, you would think that that would come with purchasing the product, right? It is. So we have seen everything from a client that has incredibly robust and very well-maintained and governed data where they're looking for us to add some of that data-rich information or further categorize their items for them. So they may have manufacturer, manufacturer part number, 
Then you have your in-between clients. They may have a little bit of manufacturer, manufacturer part number. They might have some supplier information. They might have some descriptions that have manufacturer information nested within the descriptions. And then we have clients who literally have no data and they call on us to come in and look through their physical storerooms and where they store their parts and materials and capture all that information for them so that they can begin to initiate that storage and recording of that information so that they too can make very informed business decisions. That you take for granted on the consumer side that, that yeah. all of this information that they would get. Um, the, you talked about eliminating typos and errors and human error in particular, mm -hmm. but what are, it sounds like some of the other benefits that you're going through with the question is what are some of the other benefits of, of data standardization is, is being able to, to read your data, right? I mean, <laughs> putting yes. the manufacturer number in the description doesn't help if you're looking in manufacturer part number, right? Yes, absolutely. So standardizing that data in particular, um, and it's actually a great segue into the next slides because I'm going to take you through the examples side by side so that you can see comparatively what the client provided and what we were able to provide back and how we were able to standardize things specifically like the manufacturer name field, which has a huge impact on not only our business, as a really good partner to our clients, but also to better inform our clients of the items that they actually have to allow them to identify duplicate parts that they may have created in their systems where they're potentially splitting inventory and splitting orders. So they're then not realizing the full impact of the history of that item because they have it duplicated once, twice, three times over where we're able to condense that into one unique part for them. Okay, so I'm gonna jump. That was a perfect segue, Deb, thank you so much. So really looking at it and looking at data standardization and the impact that it can have, I wanted to take you quickly through a more defined look and side-by-side -side comparison of what the client provided and what we were able to provide back to them. Um, and it's really impactful to standardize data and you'll get to see that in a minute and how that impact can happen very quickly. So what you'll see here is the client part number, the client manufacturer name, and then the standardized manufacturer name. And I wanna focus here really quickly because this touches on that question that was just asked in the chat. So what you'll see here is we were provided multiple variations of the manufacturer 3M. We were provided 3M cleanly. We were provided MMM. We were provided 3M AquaPure. AquaPure is a um, label within 3M. It is a specific product. So it's a brand or a sub-brand of 3M. And then you also have here 3M DBI dash Sala. Um, that could be a number of things, depending on how the client, you know, recorded that manufacturer at the time. It may have been specific to a certain distribution center um, or something of that nature or a location. So what we then do is we standardize this down to a singular manufacturer. And what this allows is this allows for the client to see clean conformed data that is consistent and cohesive across their catalog of items. And then because it is recorded in their catalog of items, that standardized manufacturer name will now post to anywhere and everywhere that that item is selected and transacted against, whether it is issuing inventory out of a storeroom, cutting a purchase order with a supplier, any sort of sales order or issuing data. So that's gonna allow everyone to see this name consistently and cohesively and not be distracting or deter or confuse. Um, this could be very confusing for partners. So we wanna speak the same language and standardizing data allows us to speak the same language internally and with all of our partners and clients. 
And then one of the other things I wanted to touch on very quickly was just an additional look at that client description and then that data enriched description that we are providing back, which has a number of key descriptors of an item. Um, but what's really important is to be able to provide a value. So a measurement or um, dimensions of an item, you're gonna really wanna define what that value is within that description. And you'll see that here. There's that definition where it says dimensions, colon, and then it has the measurements for you of the height and the depth so that you are fully aware of not only the value of that descriptive attribute, but also what the meaning is behind it. So you really want to make sure that you can define the different elements that you're including in a description. And then here, I just wanted to talk about the value add. So the noun, the modifier, the category, the UNSPSC code. So these are things that our clients don't often have and are really looking for to be able to filter down their items, analyze their business, categorize and bucket parts, whether it's on a very micro level, such as a UNSPSC or the macro, that being the category and the higher level ability to read and summarize that data when having to run reporting and analytics and educating the business on how you are operating and what is and isn't being utilized. So there's an immense value add here and its impact is seen not only in cataloging but also in data analysis and business information and making informed decisions. And so um, for us, data automation and the recording of bots and repeat processes has had a huge impact on our efficiency, our data quality, and enabling better decision making. The quality that we are able to deliver and the speed at which we are able to do that through these automations has had such a major impact and has allowed not only the business to make informed decisions, but for us to educate our clients and partners on why we make the decisions that we do so that we can continue to not only keep the confidence of our partners, but also to grow that confidence. confidence. Um, and truly, I do believe that going forward and the future of data and data management and data quality is the embracing of that automation and adopting the technologies that allow for that, embracing process improvement and not getting comfortable or stagnant in repeat processes because it's doing what you're used to. So really dive into exploring how you can improve what you are doing on a day-to-day. -day. That is what led us to our citizen developer program and what has had such a huge impact on our team within SDI. Great story. And thank you for sharing the story with us to that end. We do have a couple of questions. I mean, um, uh, we talked. You talked about data standardization, and 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 we see that all the time. You could get paper invoices, or uh, you you talked about actually having to go into the storeroom and and doing a crib crawl to find the data. If the question is, my company data is a wreck. Like, where where would you recommend that somebody just get started with standardizing their data? Oh, that is a great question. Um, I have been there and I feel your pain. So my biggest and best suggestion is something that we touched on earlier in the presentation. It is identifying those fields that can be established as list-driven fields. If you know that there are only specific values that should be appearing within that data point and you have duplicates and you know someone formatted it differently, there's a dash here, a period there, um, what you want to do is you want to take that list for that specific field, dedupe it, standardize it, and then only allow people to select that one unique value for each value that is supposed to be appearing in that field. And if you can identify those and lock those down, that is going to immediately safeguard 
your systems and the data that is not only recorded within your systems, but then realized company wide. List list driven fields, perfect. And then the next question is about automation. Um, any suggestions for tools uh, on just getting started with an with automating processes? Sure. We in in our team we utilized everything from recording macros within Excel. Um, and if you're in data management, you probably live and breathe Excel and access and recording macros is probably second nature to you. So if you haven't done it yet, let this be your call to go do it. Record the macro, take the time to set aside to record that repeat process. You will not regret that you did. Um, another really great tool, if you are having to, you know, automate the communication of data and spreadsheets and different things of that nature. Microsoft has a power automate program that allows you to take all the different Microsoft tools that you utilize to then communicate between systems, whether it's Excel and Outlook and SharePoint and Teams. They have really amazing templates that allow you to take automations that they've already built and plug and play. Um, and the one other bot creation platform that we used within our company was UiPath. That is what we used for our citizen developer program. And it was received really well. We took people who had absolutely no development experience, no computer science or IT education, showed them and exposed them to the program, showed them how user-friendly it was. As long as they knew that process intimately, they were able to record it via UiPath. So those would be the three that I would absolutely explore. Again, uh, this has been Allison McCulley, uh, Director of Master Data uh, at SDI. I was going to say Master Data Management, <laughs> the Master of Data Management here at SDI. And, um, you know, be sure to uh, follow Allison on LinkedIn and, and uh, check out SDI.com for some of her blogs. We'll send out the recording and the PDF afterwards. If there's any other questions, um, we'll uh, connect you with the answers then. Thank you once again, Allison. Thank you so much. Have a good day, everyone.